semuanya, apa kabar? Selamat datang kembali di Live House Bali bersama saya Deni. Saya percaya bahwa minggu kita adalah minggu yang luar biasa dan saya percaya setiap kita pasti dipenuhi dengan berkat Tuhan yang luar biasa. Sepanjang bulan ini kita belajar tentang the story of the cross dan saya percaya akan memberikan dampak tersendiri, berkat tersendiri atau pesan tersendiri buat setiap kita pribadi lepas pribadi. Jadi sebelum kita akan masuk ke message yang luar biasa, mari kita dengarkan lagu pujian, lagu praise yang luar biasa dari Lighthouse Worship. Teman-teman, saya percaya setiap kita pasti punya pergumulan, punya beban, punya problem. Tetapi marilah kita semua hari ini saya mengajak teman-teman semua untuk kita berdoa bersama-sama. Kita berdoa. Terima kasih Bapak di surga, terima kasih Tuhan Yesus, terima kasih Roh Kudus untuk penyertaan yang luar biasa sepanjang 
Minggu ini sepanjang bulan ini Tuhan kami boleh mengalami kebaikan Tuhan dalam kehidupan kami. Kami berdoa saat ini Tuhan biarlah engkau terus memberkati kami, biarlah engkau terus menyertai kami Tuhan. Memberikan kami hikmat dan kebijaksanaan sehingga kami tahu apa yang akan kami lakukan dalam kehidupan kami Tuhan. Kami percaya kami punya Allah yang hidup, Allah yang senantiasa memberkati kami. Dalam nama Tuhan Yesus Kristus kami berdoa. Haleluya. Amin. Oke, okay, sebelum message-nya lagi teman-teman, saya percaya kita semua sudah siap untuk mendengarkan worship yang luar biasa pastinya original dari Live House Worship. Mari kita sama-sama mendengarkan lagu worship. You feel my heart and you never look away. You walk with me through the ups and the downs.
Wah, seperti biasa teman-teman, lagu-lagu Life of Worship itu benar-benar menyentuh dan memberikan kita pesan yang luar biasa dan saya mengencourage teman-teman semua untuk terus mendengarkan lagu-lagu worship di YouTube kita. Oke teman-teman, saatnya buat kita untuk offering atau tithing. Mari kita baca dulu satu ayat. Ayatnya adalah dari Mazmur 128 ayat 1 sampai 2. Di sana dikatakan bahwa berbahagialah semua orang yang menghormati Tuhan dan yang mempercayakan dirinya kepadanya, semua yang taat kepadanya. Pahala mereka adalah kemakmuran dan kebahagiaan. Saya percaya ketika kita memberi diri kita, bahkan memberi setiap penghasilan kita kepada Tuhan, akan ada berkat yang Tuhan sediakan buat kita. Dan di sana dikatakan bahwa pahala kita, upah kita adalah kebahagiaan. Yuk mari kita semangat memberi kepada Tuhan untuk menolong pelayanan di tempat di mana Tuhan akan menyatakan pekerjaan-pekerjaan yang luar biasa. Ada beberapa cara buat untuk memberi. Teman-teman bisa scan QR yang ada di layar ini. Bahkan untuk bisa teman-teman menghubungi uh, nomor yang ada di bawah ini dan bisa melakukan transfer di bank account kita. Oke teman-teman, kita akan mendengarkan message yang luar biasa pastinya tetap dengan series yang sama yaitu The Stories of the Cross. Yang pasti ada banyak kisah mengenai kuasa dari salib itu sendiri. Saya percaya dengan pesan ini ketika kita bersama-sama mendengarkan dengan seksama, dengan penuh hasrat kepada Tuhan, akan memberikan dampak yang luar biasa dalam kehidupan kita. Buat semua yang siap untuk mendengarkan message ini, mari kita sama-sama menyambut message yang luar biasa ini. Hey everyone and welcome to the message today. My name is Evan from Lifehouse Hatsugi and it's such an honor to be bringing the message to you guys today. Hey, we're in this series called Stories of the Cross and that's where we're taking all these different stories uh, right up into the moment where Jesus got crucified and he rose again. And we're going to get to that later this uh, month, but right now we're going to talk about a story uh, about right before Jesus goes to the cross. Um, but before we do that, I want to tell a story from my childhood. So actually, uh, one time when I really wanted this video game, it was coming out and I was so excited and, and I really wanted to go get it and I wanted this specific version of the game and, and this store that was two hours away from where I lived was the only store that was selling that version of the game and I was I remember telling my parents, I was like, man, I really want to go to this store that's two hours away and I want to go to be there at 10 p.m. so I can pick up the midnight release <laughs> that was coming early. And I wanted to go really bad, and, and I, but I didn't want to drive, and I didn't want to get home really late, and I thought maybe not a great idea. Uh, my, parent, my mom agreed, but then my dad goes, well, no, 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 I'll drive you. I said, wait, what? <laughs> you, you want to drive me really late at night to go get this video game? You don't like video games? Like, why do you want to take me on this trip? And um, my dad was like, no, no, just, just, we'll just go. We'll go on Thursday. Let's go. And I said, okay, let's, let's go. And so I pre-ordered the game online and, and I got in the car with my dad and we went and it was uh, the whole way there. My dad's asking me questions about this game and And he's asking me, like, what are the characters and, and what's the story? And so I, I'm just so excited and I'm just telling him all these things about this game and the story. And, and uh, we get there, I get my copy of the game. I was so excited, went home and I uh, was kind of quiet on the way home because I was just staring at the game. But I got home and, uh, and uh, said goodnight to my dad and immediately went and played. Yeah, it was 1 a.m., my bad. But I started playing this game and I uh, just had an amazing time with it. And I was always thinking back to that time, like, why did my dad care so much about this game? And why did he care so much to take me to get it? And then I realized my dad didn't care about that game. He didn't care about the story. In fact, if you asked him right now, what's the story of this game? He would go, what game is that? <laughs> he would have no idea what's going on. But it was because he wanted to spend time with me. He went on a four hour drive in the middle of the night just because he cared about me, about what I cared about. And I just want to let you know today, did you know there's a God of the universe that cares about you just like that? He wants to be with you. He wants to be in a relationship with you. He wants to do fun things in midnight with you. He wants you to be in a relationship with him and he loves you and he loves you so much that he sent someone very important for him, to him to die for us. That's how much he loved us. And he wants us to know him and he wants us to be in relationship with him. And so today we're gonna to talk about Jesus. We're gonna talk about him leading up to the cross, which is where he died. Uh, and so, but he gets to go through a lot of pain to get to the cross. And so today the title of my message is, why did Jesus go through so much pain? Why did he go through so much pain? And so, Let's start the story uh, right around the time where Jesus goes to 
Pilate, this guy, the governor of the land here, the Roman governor. And uh, so these Jewish leaders, they don't like Jesus very much. Jesus kind of really upset them a lot with his teaching. And so they wanted to kill him. <laughs> yeah, basically they wanted to kill him. And so they can't kill him under Jewish law. So they had to take Jesus to the Romans because the Romans were the only people that could, could murder people around that time, basically. Uh, and so let's pick up the story here with Jesus's trial. So they bring him to Pilate and Pilate has to make a decision. So let's pick up the story in John 18. It says, Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? And then, I, am I a Jew? Pilate replied, your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, Pilate said. And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. So we have my first point here. Why did Jesus go through so much pain? Because Jesus spoke truth. See, we're talking a lot about grace and truth this year. And, and you know, not everyone responded well to Jesus' truth. And, and they don't really respond well to Jesus' truth today either. But people don't respond well to truth at all. Do you like being told that you're wrong or that you, that, that you don't actually know what's going on? I don't like being told that. But we don't like to hear truth. In fact, truth is a lot of different things now. Truth, the world has its own truth. And that is to find happiness to put happiness and self, uh, self-satisfaction and pleasure over everything else. That is the truth of the world. Religion has its own truth. And that is that you can work really, really hard. And if you do a really good job as a human being and be nice to others and follow these rules, then you can live a great life and go into the afterlife. And that's religion. But Jesus, his truth is not anything like that. Jesus' truth is grace, that we can't achieve anything, that we're not good people, that we deserve a different end to our life. We deserve death. But Jesus came to bring grace to say that we don't have to experience that, but we have to believe in him. So if we just follow him, if we listen to what Jesus says, if we strive to be like him, to live like him, to to love others the way he loved them, to follow his truth, then we can experience a life like no other. And, when he, and he asked us to, to love people, to love God. And then this will make our lives so much better. And, but this doesn't sound popular. It doesn't sound fun to most people. And it's because it sounds like Jesus is trying to take away our fun. But in reality, Jesus is trying to show us a life that is better, way better than we can ever imagine on this earth. So that is the truth that Jesus brings, that God loves us and that we should follow him. So let's talk a little bit more about that. So Pilate goes on uh, to try to release Jesus. He sees no wrong in him, though. He says, uh, I don't, I, this guy hasn't committed any crimes. I'm not going to kill him. Uh, but at this time, they actually had a ceremony where the Romans would release a prisoner that the Jewish people had in custody. And so it was around this time, around this year. So it just lined up. And so he's like, so I can release this Jesus guy. He's done nothing wrong. I can release him right now. But no, the people wanted them, him to release the other criminal, the guy, who should, the guy who should serve a sentence, Barabbas. And so they let him go. They're like, no, give us Barabbas. And so Pilate says, okay, and then gives them Barabbas and keeps Jesus. But because he kept Jesus, he had to give out the punishment. And so now Jesus is taking on a punishment he doesn't deserve. And so the soldiers are actually beating Jesus. They're, they're like knocking him around. It says the Bible even says they slap him in the face. They take this whip with like nine whips on it and they strike him in the back and they hit him so many times and it has metal and glass shards on the end of this whip and they hit him so many times that it's believed that he, he doesn't have much flesh going on in the back anymore, that his bones were exposed. Maybe even his organs were exposed. They beat him within an inch of his life. He's barely able to stand. He's barely clinging on to life. And then they take, at that moment, uh, the lowest of low, they take this crown of thorns and they shove it onto his head and like cause a lot of pain up here as well. And so then they take this purple robe, which is the sign of royalty, and they throw it around him at the end. And this is a sign of mockery because they were mocking him saying that he was a king. 
So let's pick back up in the story. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, here's the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify. But Pilate answers, you take him and you crucify him. As for me, I, am, I have find no basis or charge against him. And the Jewish, Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. And when Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. And he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. So you see, Pilate heard their claim. He heard them say that this man claims to be the son of God. And he was afraid because Pilate, deep down, he knew. He knew that Jesus was the son of God. And that's my second point and why he went through so much pain. It's because Jesus is the son of God. So he was hurt because he claimed to be the son of God. And some people don't like hearing that. Like they definitely didn't hear it back then. Some people don't like hearing it now, but Jesus is the son of God. And there comes a point in our lives where we come to this crossroads, where we hear that Jesus is the son of God. We hear the story of Jesus and we can choose to accept it, that he is the son of God. We can choose to deny it and go along with our lives. Um, And maybe this is your first time hearing this. So I'm going to break it down for you a little bit. Uh, just the probability. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk a little math right now. Uh, so Jesus claims to be the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ. There are over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that talk about how the Son of God, the Messiah, and the Christ will come into being, how he will, how he will come about. Uh, and just looking at the math of that, the probability of that, to just fill, fulfill eight, eight of uh, over 300 prophecies, just to fill eight of them is mathematically impossible. And so if you look uh, in the States, we have this massive state called Texas. It's over 600,000 square kilometers. It's massive. Now, if you were to take that whole area and you were to fill it with 500 yen coins and you were to like this about this size. (laughs) And if you fill it up to one meter high on the whole area, and then you took a random red coin and you found a random spot and you put it in that pile of coins that are a meter high over 690 kilometers, 90,000 kilometers. And you put that coin in there, you blindfolded someone and you helicopter dropped them into the middle of that state. And they got to choose where they landed. They said, land now. And then they had to go. And what's the probability of them bending down and picking up that one red coin? Impossible. There's no way, right? And so if you think about that, That's eight prophecies to be fulfilled in one man. Yet Jesus fulfilled all of the prophecies. He fulfilled all of the prophecies, over 300 of them. That's an insane number. So Jesus has every right to look Pilate in the face and say, let me tell you why I'm the son of God. I know why I'm the son of God, but he didn't. Jesus doesn't defend himself. He doesn't say all the math I just stated. He doesn't give a reason. He doesn't try to convince him. He just remains silent. And Pilate was still afraid of Jesus. Isn't that something? Isn't that powerful? Because deep down, we know the claim is true. Deep down, we know there is a God of this universe. Deep down, our heart yearns for God, yearns for a creator. And did you know, like, God even talks about this in the Bible too. Jeremiah 29, 11, we love that verse here at Lifehouse, but it goes on to verse 13 as well. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You see, deep down, we know, you know, there is something much bigger than us in this world. There is a God of this universe and he calls to you today. He wants to be in relationship with you today. And he sent his son, Jesus, to come here to, so that we could fulfill this, so that we could be in relationship with him. And so we all must answer to this someday. We all have to choose to believe whether or not Jesus is the son of God and that God sent him for us. But know this, Jesus is the only way to heaven. So I know there's a lot of talk out there. We're talking about truth. There's a lot of different kind of claims out there that you can get to heaven through any other way, or you can find happiness or nirvana or all these other things through different ways, or that there's multiple ways to get to God because all religions lead to... No, 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 no. Let's look at what Jesus says. 
John 14, 5 through 7 says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him, or you do now know him, and you have seen him. So let's finish our story back into when he's in front of Pilate and said, it was the day of the preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away and crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. And they said, we have no king but Caesar. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. And so Jesus goes off to be crucified now. He's going off to fulfill one of the prophecies. And we'll talk about that next week. We'll talk about his crucifixion and all that next week. Uh, But we see here that Jesus went through an incredible amount of pain, more than we could ever imagine. He was so hurt on the way to the cross that he couldn't even stand up. He couldn't even carry the cross with him to go to his place where he was going to die. He fell and someone else had to carry it for him. And so we got to wonder why would someone willingly go through that? Why would they step into that? It's because Jesus had a purpose. It's because Jesus wants us to be in relationship with God. And because Jesus went through this pain, we can be in relationship with God. You see, a long time ago, we as humans, we sinned. We, We made a mistake. And then the punishment for that mistake was death. We were told we needed to die for our sin, for our mistake. We were separated from God. We couldn't be in relationship with him anymore. But God sent his son, Jesus, and Jesus lived a sinless life. He did not commit one mistake. He didn't do one mistake. And then he went and willingly got in our place. He gave us grace and he stood in our place and took death for us. And then like, spoiler alert, but he rose again from the grave and came back. And again, we'll get into that. But he just wanted you to know that Jesus came to give you grace, to die for you. And you can experience that today. But I want to tell you my story with Jesus, my personal story. You see, I, I, I kind of grew up in the church, uh, but I, I kind of understood things. But at the same time, I, I, I don't know if I fully believed. I did know I, I knew of Jesus and I knew of God and, and I, I knew God existed, but, but I didn't really like follow Jesus. I didn't really like listen to his teaching. Uh, but I, I kind of said the little prayer like, oh yeah, I want to I wanna know Jesus, like kind of thing. But I never really like dove into it. And so when we, when we go to, I go to my life in college and then I started doing some crazy stuff. I started like living my life like I wasn't a Christian and I kind of like was experimenting with things. And I came, I came to a point where I didn't even think I believed in God anymore. I thought, I'm pretty sure I was an atheist at one point, but I just remember having a really bad time in college towards the later end. And I was just going through a season of difficulty and, and just a lot of hardships. And, and I was just feeling really, really down. I was very, very depressed. And, and I, I didn't even know if I wanted to continue living. I, 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 was, I, was that pretty, I, I was that sad. But I remember one night I said, God, I don't know if you're real. I don't know if you're there. But I just want you to know, like, I'm really miserable and I'm so tired and I feel worthless. And then in that moment, I can't explain it. It doesn't make any logical sense, but I felt something here. I felt a warmth come over me. And then just this tiny voice whispered to me, you are worth something to me. And in that moment, I was like, whoa, whoa, I don't know what this is. This is crazy. I, I, I got to figure this out. I think I felt the spirit of God. And so I started going back to church and, and I started like learning about Jesus and I started reading the Bible and I was like, whoa, that was absolutely Jesus who touched me that day. And, and I still have so much to understand, but I'm going to keep working at it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going at it. And, and honestly, at first, I didn't agree with a lot of what the Bible said. I didn't quite understand it and it, some of it seemed a little mean and like, you know, like it, it just wasn't feeling right. And there was some things about Jesus that I was like, that's not, that's not quite scientifically possible there, actually. I want to dive into that. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a kind of like a, a contradiction here. See, my heart believed. My heart believed in Jesus. He, I believed that that feeling happened. I believed that Jesus came into my heart at that moment and that he showed me his grace and he showed me his love in that moment. But my head was still trying to catch up. It was like, it was a little too rooted in, in like reality. You know, I, I was more like, you got to prove it through science. And, but I couldn't understand science, the faith aspect that happened in my heart. 
And so I started trying to go look in that. That's where I found actually that, that math example I explained earlier. That came from me researching and trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, but yeah, and, and the more I learned about Jesus, the more my heart got, or the more my head got in line with my heart and to where I started surrendering. You see, you can't, when you believe in Jesus, you can't just say, oh, I, I kind of sort of believe in him, like a little bit. Like, yeah, I kind of sort of, that, that makes sense a little bit, but I don't know if I fully, fully submit to that. Well, I just got to tell you, like Jesus gave 100%, okay? He gave his life. So for us, when we believe, it's got to be 100%. We have to go in and say, you know what? I'm going to choose to believe this because I have this feeling. I know God is talking to me. I know Jesus is the son of God. I know he died for me. So I'm going to believe it. And then let your head catch up later. Let your brain catch up later. Because see, for me, I I went through that. I was 100% belief, but not 100% up here. And all that took for me to go from, to line my brain with my heart, all it took was for me to say, was for me to say, I, I'm going all in and I'm not going to just kind of walk the walk and talk to talk. And I'm not going to argue. I'm just going to ask more questions. And so I just started going all in Jesus. If you, if I believe, I believe you're the son of God. So if I believe you're the son of God, I'm going to follow your teachings. And the first thing you tell me to do is to love God. So I'm going to love God. Then you tell me to love people. So I'm going to do better about loving people. And then you tell me to read your word. So I'm going to read the Bible. And I just kept reading and journaling and praying. And eventually I I came to this understanding that it's not about me understanding. (laughs) It's about that I love God and I thank him for what he did for me. And I thank him for what Jesus did for me. And so once I came to that point, I just, it all clicked. And I started understanding that it's not about understanding, right? It's about believing and accepting and surrendering your life to Jesus, your full life. So, and I believe that that can happen for you too. And maybe you're wondering, Evan, what's my first step? I got you. Uh, This is a big thing at Lifehouse, and so it's gonna surprise you, but we love journaling. (laughs) You should absolutely read your Bible. It doesn't take that long, just five minutes a day. Uh, And just open your Bible app or your actual physical Bible. Hey, extra points to you if you've got, uh, if you write your journal down, but hey, just, just come and get in the word of God and just say, God, speak to me today. It doesn't have to be that long. And then Jesus will speak to you through those pages and you just have to be open and he will speak to you and show you an amazing life that you can have with him in relationship with him. And then the other thing we can do is simple prayer. We just say, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Show me your love. Show me your power. Show me your grace. Reveal to me how I can love you better, how I can love others better. Just simple prayer. It can, sometimes you're in a rough season. You can just say, Jesus, help me and see what God does in your life. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be wordy. You can just talk to God. Talk to him like you would talk to your parents, like you would talk to your father. Just say, hey, dad, what's up? (laughs) It's just because Jesus wants to spend time with you. Just like my dad wanted to spend time with me on a four-hour drive at midnight, God wants to spend time with you. And it doesn't take that long. You can do it at any moment of any day at any time. And hey, if you live in Japan like me or in another big city, uh, you have a lot of time with like, public transportation. You can pray while you're on the train. You can journal while you're on the train. It doesn't take that long. And God just loves that you show up. God loves that you spend time with him. He just wants a relationship with you. So let's recap a little bit. We're talking about, we're talking about grace and truth this year. And, and here's, here's the grace that Jesus gave us. We were supposed to die. We have, we, we were supposed to die in our place for our sin, for our mistakes. But Jesus came and he died in our place and he rose again and he, and he took that death off of us and all we have to do is believe in him and that's the truth. So the grace is that Jesus died for us. The truth is that we have to put our belief in him in order for us to receive that blessing, receive that grace, receive that mercy. And so why did Jesus go through so much pain? Why did he go through so much for us? And that's because God loved us. God didn't want to live apart from us. When we messed up, he didn't get mad at us. He said, no, I've got to have you back. I'm sending my son to come save you. So God wants to be in relationship with you. He loves us so much that he sent his son. I'm going to leave you with one more verse before we finish. And that's a very famous verse, but it's very powerful. John 3, 16 and 17. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world 
through him. Isn't that powerful? Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for us, that when we were at our lowest and we needed your help the most, you sent your son for us. Jesus, thank you for the pain that you endured on your way to the cross. Thank you so much for taking that pain for us, the death penalty for us. Thank you for enduring that with joy, for looking into the future and seeing us and saying, I want to die for them because I want them in relationship with the Father. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for the pain that you felt. And just, we just, I just, we're just so amazed at what you've done for us. And we thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, we have one more group of people I want to pray for. Maybe you heard this message and you're thinking, and like God's stirring something in my heart. I felt that, what you said, Evan. I felt, I felt that in my heart. I felt God talk to me right now. Well, this moment is for you. This moment is between you and God. You can start your relationship with Jesus today. You can start your relationship with God today, right now. So I'm gonna pray for you in a minute, but I just want you to make that decision right now. And so when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand right where you are, or you can, you can pray that prayer in your heart. This is a moment between you and God. And all this is is a declaration to say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for me and I want a relationship with God. I want a relationship with you. So if that's you today, I'm gonna count. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus, thank you for those that are making this decision right now. It's such a brave decision to follow you. And I know it's the best decision that they'll ever make. And Jesus, I ask that you wipe their past clean, that the mistakes are gone in Jesus' name, that you have given them a new life starting right now. Thank you so much for your sacrifice and thank you so much for cleaning them, for, for wiping their slate clean and for showing them an amazing future ahead. And I ask that you bless them today, that you give them strength today, and that you give them your love today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you made that decision, like I said, it's the best decision you'll ever make. And God has an amazing plan for your life. Hey, we got the crucifixion coming up next week. We're going to learn more about that. And then we're going to learn about his resurrection on the last week. So you definitely don't want to miss out for that. So tune in next week and we'll see you then. See ya. Yo, teman-teman semua. Saya percaya bahwa message yang barusan kita dengarkan akan memberikan dampak yang luar biasa dalam kehidupan setiap kita. Dan saya percaya setiap saudara yang mendengarkan message itu akan memberikan suatu berkat tersendiri buat kehidupan saudara. Saatnya kita akan mengakhiri kebaktian kita hari ini dan saya mengkori teman-teman di manapun berada kita di live house ada yang namanya live house DNA di mana kita belajar lebih dalam lagi tentang live house dan kita belajar apa sih budaya live house apa yang dilakukan di, uh, di live house dan di live house ini apa aja yang dilakukan di sana dan uh, teman-teman bisa uh, klik link di bawah ini untuk mengetahui lebih lanjut tentang live house. Uh, terlebih khususnya Live House Bali di sana teman-teman akan mendapatkan berbagai macam informasi tentang Live House dan juga uh, kami menginformasikan kepada teman-teman sekalian bahwa di bulan ini tanggal 17 kita akan ada pembukaan semester baru buat kursus gratis Blaze wow di sana bakal ada kursus gratis bahasa Inggris kursus gratis bahasa Korea dan kursus gratis anak buat teman-teman kalau misalkan teman-teman berdomisili di dan pasar dan penasaran ingin mencoba silahkan klik link di, uh, di bawah ini atau bahkan bisa teman-teman mengkepoi Instagram kita di kursus gratis Blaze atau di uh, Live House Bali ayo teman-teman mumpung gratis kita serbu dan kita ambil setiap kesempatan ini sampai jumpa di sana